There are only two things that I hate more than the current political ads that are running on TV all the time. Flannel, and also the lack of confidence that players have when venturing outside of just open chords, kind of getting from that beginner to intermediate level, all right? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a G major chord, and then we're gonna add three distinctly different things to them, okay? And it's gonna help you venture all throughout the neck and, and everything, all right? So I'm gonna assume that you know how to play a G major chord. Middle finger, third fret on the low E string, pointer finger, second fret on the A string, ring finger, third fret on the B string. Just like you might assume that you might know if flannel is actually a fabric or a pattern. No one has ever explained this to me properly. Really, really don't like flannel. No offense to the flannel people out there, but uh, this is the flannel free zone over here, all right? So this is what we're starting out with, G major, okay? So now we have three things we're gonna pair with this, all right? The first thing is just gonna be a little note thing that's really easy to remember. This comes from the G major scale. You can think of it as pentatonic also. But we're just gonna take the fifth fret and the seventh fret on the E string, A string, and D string, okay? So, just like that. You can start with a G. G, A, B, D, E, G, A. Really, it's super easy to remember and super easy to pair because you already have that third fret, that G on the E string. And then you just go to the fifth fret and then just take those lowest three strings and then just kind of go forward and backward. Okay, so that's number one. You also might know, you might actually recognize the sound of that because it's the same as if you were to play a, that open two, open two, open two from E minor pentatonic. Okay, but I wanna go further into the fretboard to play those same notes, okay? So that's the first thing we're gonna pair with it. The second thing we're gonna do is pair this little lick here. Okay, this is really just built around a G major triad. You can think of it as being partially in like a bar chord form, but really it's just the third fret on the E string, the third fret on the B string, and the fourth fret on the G string. Okay, now to make a lick out of that, a very popular lick that I'm sure you've heard before. Sounds like that, you can slide into it. Always sounds really good sliding into what is called the major third of a chord, right? In this case, the major third right here is a B note, G, A, B. So we get that major third from. Slide, then we go to the B string, three, five, high E string, three, and then backwards, so. G, B, E, B5, B3, back to that, major third, and then maybe like a hammer on at the end. Okay, so that's the second thing we're gonna pair with it. Now the third thing is what's gonna be called an arpeggio. An arpeggio is you play the notes of a G major chord one note at a time, all right? So the arpeggio that we're gonna work with is gonna look like this. We already played the first note right here, the G on the D string, which is the fifth fret. Right? And the arpeggio is gonna look like this. Okay? So I've got the fifth fret, the seventh fret, the ninth fret. That's gonna line my fingers up with the seventh fret on the G string. My middle finger is gonna get the tenth fret on the B string, and then I'm gonna go backwards. Okay? So here are the three things that we're gonna learn again. Number one. Right? This is just an extension off of a G note. We have this lick. And then we have an arpeggio starting on the fifth fret of the D string. Okay, so these are three different ideas that I'm using on the Enya X4 Pro Carbon Fiber Guitar. This video is sponsored by Enya. Thank you so much. I, I do a bunch of videos with this and I'm always using this guitar. If you've noticed, I've got this plugged into a PA and there's a little bit of reverb just to make it sound so good because the reverb is actually built into the guitar, right? And you can also charge it via USB. So really cool instrument right here. All of any music stuff is great. And this is by far the best carbon fiber I've ever played for under $1,000. So check out the link in the description and support them because they're a big supporter of the channel, right? So let's get to using those three different techniques and start pairing them with the G major chord and also a count, all right? This is where a lot of people might might be able to incorporate more of a musical feel into their practice. Something that I don't see enough people practice enough, a lot of times I'll see people, like uh, my students and stuff, uh, do different scales, but it'll be like, you know. 
which is fine, right? But it's not really musical. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the root, then the chord, like a one, two, three, four. Right, and then we're gonna add one of the three things that we talked about, and then we're gonna have that be the second four count, right? So uh, the chord is the first four count. I'm gonna strike the root note first on the one count, the A string on the two count, and on the three count, I'm gonna play the chord, right? Like a one, two, three, four. I'm gonna leave that fourth count in G major, G, the G major chord's bar empty to get my hand ready for what we're gonna do next, right? So the first time, we're just gonna go forward and backwards through that, five, seven, five, seven. One, two, three, four. However you want to get back and forth. It's not about doing it in order. It's about using this spot that we kind of have dialed into to just make something up and just have something fun. Be creative with it. So instead of playing it forward and backward, we could just jump right into the middle. One, two, three. See how I did that? I started on the A string, and I'm getting a hammer on, then to the D string. One, two, three, four. So I'm pairing them together. It doesn't matter how you do it. It doesn't matter what speed you do it at. Even if you're just trying to get comfortable with moving your hand, maybe just play two notes from that little six note. That six note spot. And this one a little bit. Okay? Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into that next lick. Now put that in the second bar where we have extra space, right? One, two, three, four. And now you can make variations of that lick as I just did right there. Anything on the third fret and the fifth fret and the highest two strings, as long as you work that G string fourth fret in there, It's all gonna sound good, right? Because this is just really just playing around a G major chord. One, two, three, four. Could be as simple as that. Work on that slide. Another cool thing you can do with this spot is maybe a, the slide into the top to practice skipping strings. I'm using a pick, you don't have to, you can use your fingers pick. So now let's go back and forth between the six note thing we have here and the leg. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Next thing we're gonna do is add that third technique that we learned, that arpeggio. Again, I'm octaving down from a G. If you take nothing else from this video, just uh, memorize that the fifth fret on the D string is a G note. So everything that we've done before, in fact, if you wanna see this as a mirror from here, slide down. But when you get to the B string, you have to compensate for it being tuned differently. What I mean by that is instead of going, there's your G, two frets higher, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. You can do the same thing. Here's your G, two frets higher, seven, nine, seven, nine, eight, ten. That's the next pitch up, the next octave up to get those notes. But I really just want to slide into that arpeggio. That might have been a little too fast, but remember, root note. Uh, Two frets higher, two frets higher, down a string to where that second note was, and then end 
on the G on the B string, which is the eighth fret, okay? So, one, two, three, four. Right, it's a interesting kind of fluid way to get. And if you just wanna go through it forward, that's fine. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four. One, two, three, four. And again, any of these notes are fine. You just. I think it's more about just learning the location and kind of making it target practice for your fingers. And then once you get good at it, then you can start playing around within what I'm seeing is like a shape or really just a pattern of notes unlike how flannel is a pattern of squares that doesn't really look good on anybody unless you're like a unless you're a small town Hallmark Christmas channel character which is what I'm also kind of going for so now I just had the uh, the idea that if Hallmark did offer me a, a role and they wanted me to wear flannel I would have a real a real hard time with that but I'm going to reconcile the rest of those feelings off camera <laughs> and talk maybe a little bit more about the guitar lesson we're doing right so we've got these three ideas we're sandwiching them in between these G major chord strumming patterns. And now let's put them all together. All right, so. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, to the lick. Now the arpeggio. Back to the lick. We can switch them up. Maybe we'll do the lick first. Then the arpeggio. Maybe go back to the arpeggio. Then end. Just like that. However you end it, just make sure it's on a G. Get that nice, that nice resolution. Now, the great thing about this is it's movable with different shapes. As long as you remember where your root note is, everything that you learn, I think it's a great way to think about it as an extension off of a bass note or a root note, right? So you might be like, well, this starts with the open chord. I can't really move all this stuff. Well, conceptually, in, in your mind's eye, you can. So let's do it in A major. Now, the easiest way to do it would be to do it with A major bar chord. Right, because then our root note is just the same concept. We go two frets higher, and then we have that little symmetrical whole step on each string deal, right? A major bar chord. A major chord to the lick. A major again, the arpeggio. Now all that stuff is movable, but what's really cool is you could take that open chord and then maybe see how those connections come from a little farther away, right? The nice thing about the G major chord one is even though we're here, our chord is still like on the third fret rooted and then really we're starting to kind of start all these moves from no higher than the fifth fret. So it's really only two frets away. Now if we're at a major open chord like this, open A, 2 D, 2 G, 2 B, open E, now we're going from here all the way up to here. So if I do this, I could run that lick, and then maybe it's like, all right, if I'm using it with my middle finger, ring finger, and pinky, I'm gonna track my ring finger all the way into the major third of what that A major is, which again, remember, here's where we started. I'm just targeting that sixth fret on the G string. Like that, that could be great practice. Even if that's it, one really cool thing to do that'll help you with your sliding and where you're gonna stop is to not track your hand to where you're going. Look in and focus in on where you're gonna end up. So my eyes are focused on that sixth fret and I'm always gonna stop there no matter what finger I'm using, right? Get your eyes locked in. A little pro tip with, with how your brain works. Lock it in. All right, so. A major chord to the lick. 
A major chord. A major chord arpeggio. And then end on A. So, moving something that you've learned is really good practice, and you should think about that in whatever type of exercise you're doing, because why, why spend all the time working on just one thing? Even if it is the people's key, and it's gonna be most of the songs you encounter, you wanna be able to do it so you can use it in any single key, right? So this works great as whatever the root note of the key you're in is gonna be. But again, anytime you use a major chord, you can use all this stuff and kinda of like tag along. Like in the key of D major, G is the four chord and A is the five chord. Check out my Patreon if you wanna learn more about that kind of stuff. So uh, G and A are together. So you could start with like a G chord. A. G. Lick. A. Lick. G. A. So right there, that's a good example of how you can use those techniques along one chord and then have them all move to another chord in the same key or the same progression, right? So a lot of stuff that you can learn just from three different techniques in one chord. And to really, again, I don't, I don't mean to insult the flannel people out there. It's just I never really, it was described to me as a fabric first, but then the pattern, which I know is plaid, I know that I know that technically plaid is the pattern and flannel is the material. It doesn't really work out that way, does it? Because girls will talk about like their flannels, and they're really just talking about like plaid shirts, right? I know that flannel is like a loosely woven fabric. Anyways, I'm getting I'm getting a little too off topic. Get yourself an Enya guitar. This video is sponsored by the amazing Enya X4 Pro listed in the description. If you have any questions or comments, hit me in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, the website, or the Patreon. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.